Okay, so this video is about revision because most students, and certainly a, a large number of students, don't really know how to revise for GCSE English. So I'm going to share with you a way of simplifying revision, one simple method you can use for each of the main topics in GCSE English. So let's begin by talking about creative writing. Now, you've probably been told that the best thing to do is to read a lot. And yes, it does help. But if you're preparing for a specific exam, sitting down and reading War and Peace is not exactly going to automatically or in any obvious way improve your grade. So what you really have to do is read, but also analyse what you read. Instead, for example, of spending 40 minutes a day reading a book, spend 20 minutes reading and 20 minutes discussing, or better yet, writing about it. So you actually write out your analysis of the book and then you are able to practice that skill, which is what examiners look for. It's not just passively relying on the reading to increase your understanding. It's actively practicing the skill of analysing what you read. For persuasive writing or non-fiction writing, a very similar thing applies, except that, of course, instead of reading novels, you will be reading articles and speeches and essays. So you'll read non-fiction texts like magazines and newspapers. So reading news articles is a very good approach, reading articles that express opinions on certain issues. So, so much for the writing. Now, for the actual side of things where you are analysing literature, the, the best approach here is to practice writing essays in timed conditions, because the biggest issue that most students face is that they I'm not sure how to organise and structure their ideas. So yes, you need to know some quotes, but the main thing that makes a difference in a literature exam is not the number of quotes you memorise, it's how effectively you analyse and evaluate them. Therefore, you're going to have much better results if you spend most of your time practising, analysing and evaluating by practising writing sections of essays in time conditions, testing yourself in that ability constantly and improving it. That's going to get you a better result for the same amount of time than if you're just learning a few quotes. Now, when you do learn quotes, the best thing to do is learn them in clusters or groups. So group them together based on a theme and learn short quotes that you can link together that relate to that same theme or topic. That's actually a skill examiners specifically look for in the exam. Now, unseen poetry, you obviously can't apply quite the same method, but what you can do is recognise that there are certain patterns or poem that come up in the unseen section of the exam. So they usually choose a poem from the 20th century, it's usually about 30 or 40 lines, it's usually about an accessible everyday theme like love or power or education. So think about these and look for poems that meet those characteristics. AQA actually published a whole guidebook that you can find online explaining the kind of poem and giving loads of examples of the kind of poem that could come up in Unseen. And for the other examples, a lot of that is relevant. And you can just look, look on uh, websites like um, there are lots of different poetry collections online where you can find poems that meet these criteria and then practice writing about them in time conditions, just like you do in other areas of literature. Finally, for the reading sections of both language papers, so the comprehension sections, the biggest thing here is simply fully understanding the requirements of each question and then practicing them in time conditions. <coughs> so the best method here is, again, practice answering these questions in timed conditions and make sure that you actually have some guidance on how to interpret the mark scheme because usually they say things that are pretty vague like you have to write in a way that is perceptive or sophisticated but what does that mean in practice just get some guidance whether that's from a teacher or tutor parent whatever someone who can advise you on what that looks like and then work towards the the model answers to so look at example answers of students who've got to those highest levels and understand how they did that and then try to emulate that in your own work. So there's no specific knowledge you have to learn for those questions. So that's the best way to revise simply by practicing and getting feedback on your practice. So I hope that is useful because a lot of students just don't know how to begin revising English since they, they think, well, it's not really knowledge based. Well, should I just memorize quotes? Should I memorize um, literary techniques? And it doesn't make much difference usually to the result because it's the skill of analyzing or evaluating that examiners really, really 
look for, not how much you know. So if you found this useful, just um, hit the subscribe button. We have more videos on other areas of English, how to revise and how to get the maximum benefit from your time so you achieve the best grades with the least amount of effort. See you soon.